The U.S. recorded its second highest daily coronavirus death toll Tuesday, with more than 2,500 additional deaths. Experts say that number is expected to increase. Nationwide, more than 270,000 people have died since the pandemic began. Meanwhile, we are learning more about a meeting between a top White House official and the head of the department tasked with authorizing a vaccine. Food and Drug Administration Commissioner Dr. Stephen Hahn was reportedly summoned by Chief of Staff Mark Meadows Tuesday to explain why emergency use authorization for Pfizer's vaccine has yet to be approved. Hahn later said he was just updating the White House on the process. On Wednesday, the United Kingdom became the first Western country to approve emergency use authorization for Pfizer's vaccine. CBS News senior foreign affairs correspondent and Face the Nation moderator Margaret Brennan joins me now from Washington. Hi there, Margaret. Great to see you. So earlier today, our colleague, a CBS News chief medical correspondent, Dr. John LaPook, spoke with Dr. Hahn about the U.K. approving this vaccine first. And uh, John asked how that might impact the FDA. Let's listen to Dr. Hahn's response. So it doesn't affect us, John. Of course, um, we were interested to hear that uh, this morning. Um, they have a different, and I'm going to use this term, regulatory framework. They have a different approach uh, than we do with respect uh, to both uh, emergency use authorization, but also to the approval process. And so um, we have a, a process that we've outlined. We promised the American people. John, you and I spoke about this several months ago. Um, we have followed that process and we will follow that process now. It's interesting to listen to Dr. Hahn. Uh, Margaret, what kind of political pressure is he under to get a vaccine approved for mass distribution? Well, there's a tremendous amount of pressure, political, but also just knowing that it was a, an American company in concert with the German one that uh, it created this vaccine and yet not having the U.S. green light at first has to sting a little bit. But the FDA uh, commissioner, uh, Dr. Hahn there, um, was in the middle of a political fight for some time. He was called on the carpet, so to speak so to speak, today by being summoned to the White House uh, because of these headlines. Uh, but what we know is that for the past few weeks, there has been this question of whether the FDA is perhaps being too conservative uh, in uh, raising the bar for its approval process for emergency use authorization or whether it is appropriate for them to have tightened some of their standards uh, ahead of this EUA. Um, given the stakes and the status of the spread of the virus in the United States and the politicization of this entire thing, it's a near impossible task to really um, make everyone happy all at once. What we know is that the FDA is scheduled to meet eight da days from now and is expected to greenlight the Pfizer vaccine. It would be very surprising if they did not. Uh, it has been all but promised by virtually the president and everyone who works for him that it is coming. You know, as you noted, though, this is an American company. I mean, is it clear how the U.K. managed to authorize this vaccine made by an American and German company uh, ahead of the U.S.? Well, it was a U.K. regulator that uh, reduced the time of their approval process. They kind of condensed the, the process they went through and, uh, from what I understand, relied on a lot of the information that was shared by Pfizer from their testing that they had been doing. Um, the FDA, uh, and if you remember, there was a political fight between uh, Mark Meadows, the chief of staff, and the FDA that became quite public a few months ago when they were debating exactly what the standards should be and if they should be tightened for the emergency use authorization in this country. And the FDA went with the more conservative option of, of taking a little bit more time. The idea being, and this is one of the considerations here, is that you see in public polling some skepticism among the American public about whether there is political influence or whether somehow the, the, the expediting of this process um, raises concerns about the safety and trying to reassure the public that they are not cutting quarters, corners was part of the calculus 
in taking the time and giving the FDA regulators, the majority of whom are career scientists and bureaucrats, uh, the space to make the decision in the way they felt was appropriate. Uh, but this is still, um, a, a, as Dr. Fauci has put it, a land speed record for the approval of the vaccine. If this goes ahead, as expected, on the 10th of December, this would be the fastest uh, vaccine to, to market in uh, Western history. It will be in the United States, in the United Kingdom. So we know that the Trump administration is planning a COVID-19 vaccine summit on December 8th. Margaret, do we know who's attending and what the purpose of this event is? Well, we know uh, it, it is going to be a range of different corporations, including FedEx, you know, the shipping company that will be helping to distribute it, but also the pharma companies themselves have been invited. And uh, from what I'm hearing, there is a little bit of concern um, that this could again create an impression of political pressure or interference in a process um, that it could backfire, essentially. A vaccine is only as good as the number of vaccinations that follow it. Uh, the American public needs to uh, have some um, public confidence built up in the vaccine itself. And so while President Trump continues to come back to what he is proud of here, that this process happened on his watch, uh, he wants the political credit for it. Uh, keep in mind, it's got to sting a little bit for him because uh, it was his administration who created Operation Warp Speed and, uh, you know, went in there and laid the groundwork for this to happen, for the scientists who innovated here to be able to get their product to market faster than they ever really had before. But it is the Biden administration that will be responsible for distributing the bulk of this vaccine. The, the estimate is, you know, about 300 million Americans will be getting that shot in the arm under President Joe Biden. And current President President Donald Trump wants to remind the American public that it was him. Um, and so he has put a political spin on virtually every part of this process. He said things that are factually incorrect, untrue from the podium when he accused Pfizer of not announcing the vaccine before the election, for example. Um, it is just that the science and the studies, uh, the, the time it took, uh, it happened to coincide with immediately after the U.S. election. So uh, he's a little bitter about that, I think. Yeah. Um, finally, Margaret, I want to ask you about something that we've continued to watch over the months here, um, and that is a potential COVID relief bill. So after months of inaction, there seems to be some movement in the House and Senate on a potential COVID relief uh, deal. So how likely do you think uh, a deal actually is by the end of the year? You know, it's so uh, easy to be really skeptical on this one because we've been talking about it for months. We certainly know the need is there, um, but this is what's being talked about now. Uh, it, it's politically notable because it was a major concession by Speaker Pelosi to come down from that $2 trillion ask uh, to uh, uh, under a trillion dollars uh, now. Um, but it's still, though that uh, request from House Democrats has dropped in size. It's still not as small as what the Republican leadership in the Senate has said they're aiming for here. So we're not quite at an agreement. Um, so there still is room for uh, some political problems here. But this is a, a much smaller piece of uh, the puzzle than many had hoped for. But what we also know is that even if they can't come up with a new package of aid that would include things to help um, build, for example, food stamp allotment, um, things to help people who are immediately in crisis right now. There is an upcoming deadline at the end of the month for expiration of existing programs. So there is sort of setting a low benchmark and hoping they can uh, extend programs rather than perhaps inject a whole new round of relief in here. It is not clear that any of this will pass before the end of the year, um, and we may be talking about it uh, within the first few weeks of a Biden administration. But what is interesting, Elaine, is that throughout the election cycle, 
we found in CBS polling that this was one thing that Americans blamed both parties for. They really faulted Democrats for not providing relief before the election, along with faulting the president for not putting his shoulder behind it and pushing it through. And I think that sends a message that Joe Biden, the president-elect, has noted because he's publicly spoken about it, that there is a desire uh, among the public to just say, guys, get together and get something done because there is need out there. Yeah, it really is so bewildering, I think, to so many Americans when the political will exists, how there can still be this deadlock in Washington. All right, Margaret Brennan for us. Margaret, always great to see you. Thank you very much. Good to talk to you, Lynn.